Hello there. So in this session, we're going to be working with the file system provided within TI's SDK. We're going to use that file system to build up our own live file system by transferring binary blobs that are responsible for doing the bulk of the work that is required to use PowerVR's SGX530 GPU device. Once we have our basic setup up and running, we're going to go ahead and work with Imagination Technologies SDK, which we will be using to compile example code that will further help us in picking up the binary objects and libraries that are needed for our PowerVR driver to be fully functional. So let's get to it. So here you are looking at the uh, top directory of our workshop uh, project. And what we're about to do is um, take a look, a look at the uh, file system provided by uh, TI's SDK. And what we're going to do is okay, extract. What we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be using this file system as our sysroot, basically. And we're going to transfer, okay, we're going to transfer binary objects from this file. Okay, let's just go here. From this uh, file system into, what are you doing? Okay, so we're looking for uh, primarily user library. That is where we're going to transfer most of our objects or um, user land objects from. Mind you, not everything. Look at this. Look, this is a uh, this is the definition of a bloat, and so we're not going to copy everything. We're only going to copy things that are uh, needed, and uh, you'll see later how we get to know which uh, libraries are actually needed and which are uh, for other stuff. So. Uh, Let's go and um, initialize our modules our, uh, in our Linux kernel or in our uh, live file system by running make. Okay, we need to set up the, uh, the environment first. Okay, good to go. So let's set up our, um, of course you need sudo here because you're, you're uh, working with a file system. install mod path. This is the path to our file system, extracted file system in our NFS uh, exports. And uh, we're going to run modules install. so long. Silent config, that's not good. Why are you doing that? Okay, none of this. None of this stuff. Um, is work set? It is set. Let's make the kernel first. Maybe we could, oh, yeah, I did not make the kernel after we introduced all the uh, uh, modifications in the last video. So uh, it was it was trying, when we ran sudo make whatever, it was trying to build it first. And because we're using sudo, our environment um, script is uh, useless. So it was basically running uh, using the uh, host system configuration. That's why it gave us the 64-bit kernel and all that. Good talk. Okay. Come on. Okay. So we're done here. Let's uh, 
this actually let's let's go the uh, the paranoid way and set our arc and our cross compile to arm Linux GNU yeah the hardware float okay this should work there so we've installed the modules directory in our uh, file system. This means we've just coupled our uh, kernel to our file system, by the way. This is a, a necessity. So let's go see what happens. It's in library, modules. Yeah, there you have it. And it says dirty. Mind you, those, those modules are not really uh, not really uh, needed. I uh, it's an incidental thing. I just didn't pay attention uh, to the in kernel built modules. So let's make um, our extra directory, which is a standard. If you read the documentation in the Linux kernel about modules, extra is where your uh, external uh, built mo externally built modules go. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer. The modules that we just built in TI's SDK into our kernels uh, or uh, file systems extra modules directory. These two guys. Actually, I don't think we need a VC example, buffer class example. It's uh, I'm only transferring it because there's a script that we're about to uh, transfer or copy over from the file system of TIs into our user, where is it? Lib, into our um, file system, and it expects VC example to be there. Uh, that is the uh, only reason why we're taking it. We could have modified the script not to need it, but. Uh, we're lazy like that. Let's view extra there. So we're good to go. Now we're going to go over and uh, basically run. Yeah, we're going to go run the or start our Beagle Bone Black and see if we can insert those modules without a problem. Um, let's just sudo minicom. Where is my switch? There you are. Okay. We still have that temp fs issue, which I'll fix later. It's basically a configuration in the uh, kernel that I missed. Let's go up there and look for uh, neon sgx something something. There you have it, AM335X. So this is the effect of our um, of our uh, DTB device tree uh, blob. So now we know we know that the, the kernel has picked it up. Okay. Um, okay. Let's run that mod and uh, insert PVR. Oh no. To go into the directory, the modules 4.30 extra. Probe PVR server kernel module. Yeah. 
Okay. No complaint. Um, let's try loading the other guy. Said nothing. But it's okay. This, of course, doesn't mean that it that they work. It just means that the kernel has no problem loading loading them, loading them. Um, we still have a, we're we're still gonna have to go over and copy our uh, user land stuff. So let's get to that. The first thing we're gonna copy is uh, the script that initializes the whole um, uh, Power VR. SGX system. It's in etc init.d and uh, there it is rc.pvr. So we're going to copy this guy over to our own etc init. Note that the, the, um, the file system is loaded over NFS and it's actually in use. So this is this is why it is uh, Always a good idea to start development with an FS, uh, NFS loaded root file system because all changes can be immediate. We don't have to transfer stuff. So let's cd into, uh, okay, or actually, I'm going to go over and remove those because the, that script expects them not to be loaded. So we just want to give it what it expects, no, lo no modules. Okay, so let's uh, cd into etc init.d and uh, there it is, run, run the script we just copied over, let's see what happens, oops, okay, it, uh, okay if you read the, uh, the script you'll find that it expects, okay, pvr server control, okay, this is something we need to copy over, this will be the first uh, binary object that will copy from the file system provided by TI to our, where are you, is it user binary? That's where you'll find it. Let's look for it. What just happened? Okay. Click. There it is. So we're going to copy this guy over to our own user binary directory uh, uh, script pvr srv control is it server or service control okay we don't need this for now we're going to need it later when we're copying multiple uh, objects file system, user binary. Okay, let's go and run our rcpvr thing again. Let's see what happens. There, it's missing a, uh, a library. See there, no such file or directory, which means we're going to have to copy this guy over from a file system. For it here. There. We have two of you. CP the output of this into server NFS4. That four there again is not uh, has nothing to do, it does it has no meaning. It's actually NFS3. But that's just a name. The what what did I do? Okay. Okay. This the output of this is not okay. Let's just copy this one at a time. Mm 
good enough. Let's go over to, uh, where are you? There. Okay. Udev. Okay, Udev is a, uh, is a lot is a package that we we may find other uses for so let's not copy it over let's actually go to build root and uh this is our okay let's just make a new thing so echo arc not set very important uh, i actually don't know if that that's important or not but i i'd imagine it is i didn't test it so we're going to look for udiv uh, within uboot, um, sorry, within build root, and basically have build root build it for us instead of going ourselves and stuff. Uh, going ourselves, uh, downloading the source and going through all that. We're going to look for eudev. Um, uh, okay, there, the first one is eudev. Oops, why do you give me this? No. This is not good for business. I think it's because it depends on stuff that are not selected. Let's go down. Let's see which one would give us Python. Okay, this looks promising. But it's legacy config. Well, let's try it. It's now a virtual. Let's see what this means. Has been given to virtual batches of lines for this feature are. Okay. EU div. Let's look for EU div. The system D would be an overkill. Hmm. Which one of you guys? First one, and it jumps right back to this. Hmm. Okay, look at that. 8M335X. Okay. This thing probably wouldn't build, even if we try. Uh, it needs too much stuff in the kernel. So let's uh, look for it manually. This is very unlikely, but we're desperate. Hmm. Nope, none of that. Hmm. Okay, let's um, let's do one thing. Uh, we could look into okay, what is this? EU dev needs dev management. So this is a configuration that needs to be in. This thing needs EU dev. Weird stuff. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Maybe in libraries, file system. This is the most probable place. No, not really. Mm. I'm confused. Okay, let's look for udiv and actually check out the dependencies of it. So device creation dynamic, something depends on MMU. Selected, this is selected, this is not selected as it should be. Uh, okay, so this, what is this package has? Okay, this selects that. So this guy is the only dependency that is not set. So we're going to look for that. Now look at that, it's in system configuration. Way, way back. Let's see. 
There we have it. Okay, so I missed this. Uh, I didn't really miss it. It's just obscure. Uh, do you have to go for something else? No. This is selected. This is selected. Number three. Uh, number four is selected. Okay. I think uh, I think we're good to go. So let's just build or make. And uh, I'll probably speed this up. And come back in a minute. Okay, so we're done. Or the building process is done. And this will be packaged into our new root file system that we'll find in output images. And uh, what we're going to be doing is basically extract the root file system that we just built. Uh, or build root just built for us because it's awesome onto the uh, live file system that we have running and uh, this isn't this is not a problem because of the fact that we have the same base so this we're at we're basically adding components to our root file system so it's not a problem now let's go back and run this guy Wayland server. This this looks like an overkill. No, we're, we're okay. We're, we're gonna go to build root again and get Wayland. Target packages. Um, this is probably in libraries, graphics. Wayland, 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 W is down. Where are you? There you are. Simple enough. Now, let's just make again. You see, the, the problem with, with Wayland is that it's... Uh, it's really an overkill unless you're going for a full-blown uh, environment, um, say using Qt or uh, some other uh, system. Wayland is uh, is too much to be a dependency, a basic dependency that you'd need just to get your Power VR system up. Because you see, I don't think. Um, See now we're trying to to uh, right now we're trying to transfer the dependencies of the binary which is uh, Power VR control Power VR service control, and that is not an open source thing. So by closed sourcing it and having it depend on Wayland, it means even if you're not using Wayland, even if you're going the cute um, the cute quick way, it won't work. I mean it would work. But it's just, uh, you don't really need Wayland for a cute quick. Or maybe I got that wrong. Okay, well, we'll look into it. Anyways, we're done here. And uh, we're going to do the same exact thing. So we're back work on our reverse search. Do the exact same thing. Extract over a live root file system, which will add Wayland in its dependencies. Awesome. Let's run this again. Lib SRV init. We need that. Now this doesn't look like something we can compile ourselves. It's, it looks like one of the uh, objects or blobs. So let's uh, drip for it. Everything. Oops. I think that, that star there messed something up. Oh, um, okay. What am I going to do? Okay. Remove the star. Go on there. Hmm. That 
that's it. Sorry, versioned. Okay, let's just uh, get the whole thing and uh, just remove that dot so we can get the actual library without versions into server, NFS4, root file system, user libraries. What? Syntax error. Where? Where is the syntax error? See that? The thing is, you probably can see it, but I can't really see. Okay, let's just. Uh, grip for this guy. Uh, so, what did I do? What did I do wrong? Oh. There. <laughs> uh, okay. This should work now. Let's go over and test it again. Hmm. User module. We're going to have to transfer this guy again. Okay. Hopefully I won't make that mistake again. Okay, we're good. We run again. Okay, libcap. Libcap is not a blob. We can actually get this package. So let's just use um, Build root again. Menu config. How awesome is this build root thing? Target. Look for libcap. There it is, the first one. Let's just get to it. Easy enough. This should build fast enough, so. I'm not going to need to uh, speed up the thing. Hopefully. There. Now we're going to go through the same process again. We're extracting over our live uh, root file system. Test again. Oops, now this, uh, this is not expected. This is a runtime error. I thought we added, okay, where's our program counter? It's there. Hmm. This is embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, um, this is the process. That's the binary you were running, and uh, our load register is there, and our program counter is there. Okay, I think uh, I think this is something that I'm going to have to look into. Um, it may take too long. SGX reset. It may take too long, so uh, I'm not gonna, not gonna record this portion, but this part, but uh, I'll probably come back and tell you guys what happened. So see ya. Okay, so uh, it turns out that I did not, I did make the kernel, but I did not transfer the Z image into our um, TFTP server. So we were TFTPing the old server, uh, um, the old Linux, and uh, trying to get it to work with uh, the stuff we added.
Well, let's run this guy again. And there you have it. This is what we should have seen. Anyways, uh, at this point, what we need to do is basically get something to test our setup with, which will uh, lead us through the uh, process of getting the rest of the required objects into our file system. And to do that, we're going to go to uh, Imagination Technologies SDK. We're going to get that, this thing. Actually, let's, uh, let me just uh, start from the beginning. Uh, we're going to look for our VR um, what? SDK download. Follow that link. Come on. Where is it? Okay, this is Linux 64, that's mine. And uh, accept terms and download. You should read this if you feel like it. You probably should if you're working on a real pro uh, project. And uh, okay, just agree. Go to download. Okay, did you you got to get this guy. I I did, so I'm not going to do that again. Let me show you where my Power VR SDK is. You download the binary just like we did with the TI SDK, uh, but this one's uh, a lot more demanding. There you have it, Power VR SDK. So if you run it, it's gonna ask you for root privileges which is just ridiculous. So we're gonna fake root, root it and run it within fake root. And there, a Windows-like wizard, very unfamiliar. Um, yes, next, we don't want that, not that, not that, not this, trace maybe, no, yeah, none of that. Tune, okay, real time, that's what we want. PVR for none of the stuff, none of that. Collapse, none of this. Collapse, next. And here's where you'd, uh, you'd set your directory. I set it into the uh, root directory of our workshop. Um, and, uh, okay, let me go see, let me go show you where that is. Uh, are we? We're still in. I think we're still in. Uh, in uh, what is it? Workshop. I don't know. We're okay. Imagination. There it is. But we're still in. Uh, in uh, what is that? Still in fake root. Oh, we're gonna deal with that later. Let's just go in here. So we're gonna go into examples. Uh, beginner, because we're beginners. Into hello. Into Linux. Yes. Seven order flows float. Okay, we're gonna make clear clean. Okay, that's where all our build will be done. But we need to uh, we need to get out of uh, we need to exit. Okay, just exit fake root. You're back here. Go to development projects. Eagle Bone Workshop. Man, 
imagination. SDK. Let me show you. But uh, how I got to know about the process of compiling uh, the examples out of the uh, PVR SDK. We need KDE open getting started. Um, we were looking for Linux, Linux, Linux. Where are you? There, Linux. Toolchain environment. Okay, you can define your toolchain or add the path of whatever, whatever we used that we've been doing. Uh, if you don't know none of that, uh, we want individual components. So for us to do that, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna build for this guy. So we're gonna say make. You have to set up your platform, and we're gonna set it to that. Yes. So let's go into uh, the example we want to build. Zero one hello GLA OG Linux RV seven Harbor float. There we are. So let's run make. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna try one thing first just to show you. Uh, we're going to set the platform to uh, RV7, or V7, hardware float, and our tool chain to, uh, to the build root tool chain that we got, the one we've been working with uh, all this time. And the reason why I'm not setting the environment is uh, the fact that this is not going to work. Uh, there's some issue with the uh, settings here that causes this compiler not to work with the, uh, I think it's too recent. So here, it gives you a um, target CPU does not support and whatever, that's nonsense. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a, um, a, a GCC compiler that I have or had for about a year now in our tools, GCC, then our own. It's a 2015 version that this guy works okay with. So there's our compiler. Okay, so this would work, but the, the latest one we were working with would not. Uh, let's go here. We're going to copy this guy to. Uh, to our server or you know what we could let's just make a directory for it under OPT okay let's do it here under uh, OPT make the IR IMG so we get all our test uh, objects will go there so we're going to cp this guy into server nfs root file system opt img okay let's go there and try to run it there so this is the next library that we're going to uh, need. Let's go look for it in our sysroot or file system from TI's uh, provided SDK user library. What is it called? Lib EGL embedded GL, is that it? Um, Okay, let's script for it. Three entries. Now we're gonna keep everything we do here in 
in a, uh, in a text file. The reason we're doing that is because we don't, um, this is a very repetitive process and we, if we, we don't want to come back and do it if we ever have to, um, you know, scrap our file system. So we're going to keep track of everything we do in a, uh, a text file. And if we ever have to uh, do it again, we could just do it in a um, bash script or something. So let's copy this guy after we've transferred uh, everything to our file system, we copy it and save it here. Let's run this guy again. You need that. We're going to go through the same exact process multiple times. Perhaps I should just uh, speed up this process and uh, if you want to see it, you could just run the video at a slower speed and uh, figure stuff out. DBM. Okay, um, before we go, uh, I'd like to show you something. Instead of doing this, of going through this process the way we did, we could have basically viewed, um, read the ELF of, uh, okay, ARM, or we should, we have to set up the uh, environment first. So we, got, um, we could have viewed, uh, we could have viewed the, con the contents of the uh, object files that we're trying to um, work with and figure out the dependencies of those object files from that, uh, from the ELF of them. So let's see our Linux GNU read ELF minus A of, okay, only this object. Okay, so this would tell us the uh, dependencies. We're going to have to click for LIB. This would tell us the dependencies of this object. So it says needed here. So it needs this guy, and it needs this guy, and that guy, and that guy, and this guy. So uh, this is a. Uh, you can actually write a script that could, uh, or a, a long command that would just, you know get this stuff out of your, um, out of that output and basically transfer everything that is needed. So I guess we're going to stop this guy here uh, because it's close to um, 45 minutes or 44 minutes and that is too long. In the next video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, run this guy, go through our first test and uh, hopefully everything will work out. See you guys next time.